We have prepared a comprehensive and detailed tutorial on Microsoft Paint 3D for beginners and those who want to learn. To get the most out of this training, following this content and our previous and subsequent or other related trainings that we publish in series will help you understand and achieve much more. Paint 3D is a raster graphics and 3D modeling application, a revamped version of Microsoft Paint. Whether you are an artist or just want to doodle, Microsoft Paint 3D is a great way to unleash your creativity and bring your ideas to life. Paint 3D, the easy to use drawing and design application, is designed for Microsoft Windows 10 and later. While it is readily available in Windows 10 versions, it can be downloaded and installed for free in a very practical way from the Microsoft Store for use in later versions such as Windows 11. If it is installed on your device, you can access the program by searching for it in the Start menu. Or we open the program by clicking on the Microsoft Paint 3D symbol from MS Paint, that is, Edit with Paint 3D. Or we can also access it by typing the program name from the Start menu, as we just mentioned. As soon as we open the program, we are greeted with a welcome message. In the Welcome section, there are options to start a new project or to start an existing project. And we also have the possibility to import 2D or 3D work from outside. If we want, we can uncheck so that the welcome screen does not appear. There are two introductions on the welcome screen. One is a library of 3D assets and a short introductory clip about some new tools. Of course, we will go through them quickly, but we strongly recommend you to watch them. The file menu has the basic functions that every program has, such as save, load, import, export and setting sections. The library and menus with ready-made 2D and 3D assets, the new brushes, the practical intuitive user-friendly interface of the menus will make your work easier. In a moment, we will try to practically explain the new layouts and advanced tools or features in a step-by-step -step and comprehensive way. When you hover your mouse cursor, over menus and sections on the interface, a short information summary of the relevant section appears. Let's start with the Canvas section. Canvas is the name of the surface on which we draw and design, similar to real life. To zoom in and out of the canvas, we can use the magnifying glass, zoom setting, shown above with plus and minus signs, or we can use the mouse wheel, which is much faster and more practical. We make random scribbles on canvas to make it easier to observe and follow. Going back to our canvas settings, there are width, height and aspect ratio options for the canvas. With the canvas settings, we can either expand our canvas and the drawings on it, or we can change only the aspect ratio of the canvas without changing the size of the drawings on it. We can also rotate our canvas 90 degrees or turn it upside down. It is possible to change canvas aspect ratios in pixels or percentages. There are options to make our canvas completely invisible or transparent, and we will show you them all with practical examples. When we click on the canvas with the right mouse button, a shortcut menu will open where we can quickly access the canvas settings section. The reset command here allows the size of the canvas to be displayed again at its actual size according to the 1 to 1 ratio. That is the 100% setting. There is also a command to take a quick screenshot of our canvas. Just by holding down 
and moving the middle mouse button or the wheel, we can scroll or move freely and quickly on the canvas. We can also scroll freely on the canvas with the combination of the out and arrow keys on the keyboard. Thanks to the selection command, at the top left, we can select a rectangular area on the canvas and perform different operations on it, such as resizing, rotating, and many other image manipulations, or remove it completely with the delete key. In the brush tool section, we are greeted by a variety of pencils, brushes, erasers, and painting tools, each with a different style. There are sections for options such as brush size, thickness and transparency or weight, as well as color specifications. We'll get into the colors section in detail and with step-by-step -step examples in a moment. But first, let's start with a quick visual introduction to the style and characteristics of the brushes. Now we can start the color section. Thanks to its user-friendly interface, it is very clear what the tools and icons do intuitively. Here, yeah. We have a dropper shaped icon called a color picker, which helps us get sample colors from the color pixels on the canvas. We use the brush tools to bring out shades of gray, black, yellow, red, blue, light blue, and other colors to better show the color blending, and the color picker tool to sample the intermediate colors from the blends in between. Or we can create color mixes by using ready-made colors from our color palette in different transparency and weight ratios. With the spray tool, we will create an example of a color blend from dark red to white. We can create a special shape mask from the color mix we have created and make a round cut with a circular decoupage. Later in the tutorial, we will cover the concepts of shapes, layer logic, and masks in detail. We export these samples we made in canvas size and also in PNG format by cropping the color mix sample. So we have shown the way to save and export the works. We can also import the blended circle image in cropped red tones by dragging and dropping it from the outside onto our canvas or by selecting the file directory from the file menu with the insert option. Among the selection commands, there is a special selection, the magic selection, which works with a simple artificial intelligence and which we can also operate on manually. The magic selection command can be activated by first focusing on the entire canvas or on a rectangular area selected with the normal selection tool. Once the area to focus on is selected and the magic selection command is activated, it selects the part or section of the image to be selected and darkens the areas outside. But if you don't get the selection you want, no problem, because in the second step it is possible to add and subtract areas to be included or excluded again, which we do with a selection addition and subtraction tool similar to an eraser and brush. At the final stage, if we have decided on the selected area, there is an additional option, fill the background in the selection area in a way that matches the content or leave it blank. Here, we cancel the automatic background fill, and when we move our image after selection, the background will be transparent and empty.
There is a very important detail here. The images selected with the magic selection tool are 3D objects, regardless of whether they are two-dimensional or not. They are already in the form of objects that you can access by clicking on the canvas, and you can rotate and manipulate them in 3D. Using the create sticker command, we render them again on canvas or turn them into two-dimensional pixel images. The sticker format is in the form of a two-dimensional ready-made image object that is selected. The stamp command for single processing or multiple processing is used to engrave selected 2D objects, that is stickers, on the canvas. We can access and use the stickers we created during the work from the related menu. Now, we will create a gradient color transition, or color blend. For the first gradient sample, which will consist of light dark blue tones, we sort the colors in certain proportions in a small area with a brush. We select a copy of the resulting unblended adjacent blue tones and resize it. By resizing, we reduce it vertically to almost one pixel in size. And when we expand it vertically again, the expanded area is automatically filled with a gradient color fill similar to the color transition effect. We can select sections from the gradient effects we have created and expand them by duplicating and resizing their instances. We create a simple gradient design background, save it in PNG format, and transfer it to the desktop. We've already shown how to import an image file into an existing work with drag and drop, and here's a short reinforcement example. In our next topic, we will import a mantle work and examine its color properties using tools like the bucket tool. The bucket tool has a special place and feature in the brushes section. In addition to the transparency setting, the bucket tool has a tolerance setting, which, if set to high, can produce a color fill that covers the entire canvas. If the tolerance of the bucket tool is optimal, the color change feature will function more consistently. The bucket tool is actually the process of converting a specific color to another color selected according to a tolerance level. Since it is applied to a specific color area, it creates the effect of filling the color of that area with the selected color. The mandala work was very suitable for the expression of this topic, so we transferred an unfinished mandala work from outside. We can work faster when the bucket tool and the color picker tool are used together. If the color tool and the bucket tool are used together. When we use the color picker tool again and select a color, it will automatically take us back to the last selected tool, the bucket tool. If the bucket tool is selected and then we use the color picker tool, we don't need to go back to the color picker tool for the next color selection. Just hold down the spacebar for a few seconds and the last tool we used will become active. When the last helper tool, the color picker, is activated with the space bar, an indication of which color to select will appear above the mouse cursor as you hover over the canvas. We can fill part of the mandala with what we have explained so far. Below our color palette, there is a bottom row color palette indicated by a plus sign. In this area, we can place the custom colors we have defined so that they are easily accessible and we can customize and edit them again. We can activate the color edit panel by clicking on the area next to the eyedropper. That is the area that shows the current color selection in a larger rectangle. 
With the color editing panel, we can create almost unlimited color options and transfer them to our color palette or canvas thanks to the selection area with a wide range of colors with RGB and hexadecimal system and the sections where we will enter numeric color definitions. We select and duplicate the 90 degree that is one quarter area of the circular mandala work with the selection tool. And by rotating symmetrically 90 degrees, we combine the four pieces of work into a single and symmetrical piece and transfer it to the desktop. Our next topic is the 2D shape section, which we used in a few places in the examples. All 2D shapes are created in two basic stages, creating and rendering on canvas or engraving on canvas. Creating 2D shapes is similar to sticker logic. In fact, when it comes to stickers, which we will go into more detail about in a moment, each sticker is actually a stamp or a special 2D shape ready to be processed. The best way to explain this topic is to present it to you in an accelerated way with different examples. In this chapter, we basically explain the logic of 2D shapes and stickers step by step with visual examples. The text tool is a tool that helps us create customized titles or texts. With the text tool, we can create 2D or 3D text or titles. Using masks, it is also possible to create text effects with different designs in terms of color and pattern. Again, we have shown you the text tool visually in a fast and practical way with step-by-step -step examples. With the print screen hotkey on the keyboard, we can take an instant screenshot of the screen, open and edit it in 3D Paint, and now let's do it with an example from the desktop. We took a snapshot of the screen from the desktop. We can place the screenshot with the Ctrl plus V key combination or by right clicking on the canvas and choosing paste to canvas. We will make an example on background removal decoupage and custom selection. In the image of our desktop wallpaper, we will separate and manipulate the image of a black knight chess pawn. When we zoom into the relevant area on the canvas, we first set the focal point with the normal selection tool and then execute the magic selection command. The magic select command has selected the chess knight pawn in a largely consistent way, but with a few tweaks we will include some of its regions in the manually selected area. If the image fragment to be selected and the background color are in a contrasting and non-mixing color scale, we can use the bucket tool to change the background color or to make the removal process more practical. We can change or remove the background color by increasing the tolerance value of the bucket tool or by using it more than once. We can retouch with a razor, brush and 2D line tools to achieve finer and more precise results and make the decoupage area clearer. We have shown the masking method roughly in the color blending and text tool section. Let's show again, with a few examples, how we can create a different design with a transparent mask area cropped 
and decoupaged. Our next topic is image tracking using layer logic. The material on the desktop that we will use to illustrate the subject on canvas is the Felix cat doodles that we had previously drawn with a real pencil on a full paper. Due to this example of a drawing taken in a dark environment without enough light, it will be difficult to view the image, but that's okay because we have a practical solution. First, we choose one of the Felix cat drawings and crop it to make it easier to work with. About the 2D shape tools, we will use another feature that we haven't talked about in detail yet, the 3D rendering feature. Thanks to this feature, we will prepare a very convenient layer in terms of image tracing method with the ability to move the 2D frame we will create freely at any time without engraving it on the canvas. Yes, 3D Paint unfortunately does not have a detailed and comprehensive layers feature, like Adobe Photoshop, GIMP or Krita, but thanks to these intermediate solutions that carry the layer logic and features, we can work with layers and add layer management practicality to our operations. To recreate the underlying lines with image tracking, we will create a very simple 2D rectangular frame with white fill but semi-transparent. The white color will break the intensity of the excessively dark color while providing a clearer contrast. We will then transform this frame area into a 3D object, then into a sticker, and then back into a 3D object by adjusting the transparency level of the color. We need to turn it into a 3D object so that we can draw on it as if we were working with an artificial layer. We start drawing the outline of the drawing with the curve tool from the two-dimensional drawing tools. We can manipulate ready-made two-dimensional shape tools, such as circle, ellipse, and use them on the drawing. After completing the outline of the drawing with the image tracing method, we turn it back into a sticker and save it. The bucket tool and tolerance values provide us with great convenience during the coloring phase. At the end of the process, we use brushes, erasers and 2D line and curve tools to retouch and refine the drawing. After our Felix cat drawing is colored and finalized, we save and export it. In addition to all this, we'll also show you how to transform any drawing or image into a pixel art-like style. We can use our ready-made Felix cat drawing for the tutorial. The process is actually quite practical. After selecting the image we want to pixelize, we gradually reduce its size until it becomes a concentration close to pixel art. In the meantime, we need to zoom in to see the change more easily. Once we have reached a sufficient pixel density, we confirm the resizing, and then we can enlarge it as much as we want, and the resulting image will continue to give the effect of pixel art. For the tutorial content, we can experiment with desktop backgrounds from the images we have created so far. Let's continue with a quick video explanation. Yes, you can design new and different custom wallpapers by rearranging or manipulating the design drawings or existing drawings we have made through the 3D Paint application. Now we can directly start explaining the 3D features in full detail.
When we get to the 3D Ready Shapes section, there is a 3D library button right above it. This library contains 3D objects and models from the community. We can also access the 3D library tab from the far right section above. There are 3D models categorized under various headings, and we can access the relevant 3D models either through these headings or by entering keywords in the search section. As a first example, we choose a 3D model of a landing eagle and import it from the library into the workspace. 3D interface elements, like other tools, are basically intuitive and user-friendly in terms of the directional signs they show. On the frame edges of the selected 3D model, there are boxes for resizing and circular icons that help us rotate it in three main directions, X, Y, and Z axes. When you hover over icons, information boxes tell you what they do. Besides the rotation icons, there is a forward and backward arrow icon on the far right, designed as a command to scroll forward and backward in the Z direction. We quickly take a few of the ready-made 3D models from the library and place them in our workspace. To save the work as a project, click Save as from the File menu and select Save as Paint 3D Project. Saving work as a project allows us to rework and edit where we left off, especially for a work involving 3D objects. Of course, we could also save the work into D as some kind of PNG or JPEG or other image file. But of course, the 3D properties of 3D objects would be lost in such a file. We can save and export different types according to the needs. Another export method is the export option in 3D format as a 3D model, where we can export our 3D model works with file extensions in GLB and 3MF format so that they can work in different programs. We can view or render our work in an environment that can open 3D images. The 3D Weir application, available on Windows operating systems, is a program that helps to view 3D works with different features. You can also review it here. Another important tool panel section is 3D shapes. Here you will find tools for creating ready-made 3D geometric objects and object models as well as 3D shapes that can be created by drawing, doodling or freehand drawing. We create a representative example of some 3D shaped tools in a visually accelerated way. We can update, edit, and change many properties of each created 3D shape object, such as size, angle, depth, color, etc., even after the creation phase is complete. Although they have similar characteristics, it is also possible to create new shapes and patterns, individually or together, or in combination. Here we will demonstrate this with a small 3D modeling project that can be easily understood. We could redesign Aladdin's magic lamp as a popular object. Yes, that would be a nice modeling exercise, but we can cover that in much more detail in a separate modeling tutorial. Here we will try to create a more familiar object design, but in a slightly faster and simpler way. We started drawing Aladdin's curved sword for another design that fits the concept of the story we just talked about. We started to draw roughly from scratch with the pencil tool. Since 
This is a comprehensive Paint 3D tutorial. We will present the general information in an accelerated practical way. We will cover a comprehensive modeling tutorial in more detail in our next lessons. So far, we have used a mouse instead of a drawing tablet, which is a bit more challenging. But unfortunately, not everyone or the general public has access to drawing tablets for economic or other reasons. In a sense, these works are an example of a wider audience owning a mouse and showing that you can design and draw almost anything with just a mouse. Of course, we will also create trainings on tablet use and drawing with tablets. Those who already use drawing tablets can apply these topics on their own drawing tablets. We have completed our sword outline, presenting each stage side by side to show its progress. Now we can start 3D modeling on the sketch drawing that we will use as a reference. Modeling and design issues can be much more detailed than what we have mentioned here. And it is another comprehensive subject where we can cover many topics separately. As we have already mentioned in the following chapters, we will provide you with tutorials that will cover 3D design and modeling in more detail. Our main goal here is to try to provide you with a comprehensive hands-on training of the Paint 3D application with the simplest examples. With the 3D shape and design tools, we can quickly create 3D shapes, copy, combine or redesign them, and then change their size, color or other modifiable properties to fit our sketch. Yes, the 3D model of Aladdin's curved sword is ready. We group all the parts into a single object to collect and manage them. We will paint our design using 2D shape tools and brushes, which can make it fuller and more eye-catching. When we get to the effects section, we can specify the angle, color, and properties of the light reflected from our model and the general light source. In addition to the ready-made effect settings filters with the light wheel, we can change the properties of the light and create a very different ambience, for example, bright light, dim light, or sunset. And finally, with the history section, there is a command to save a short video of some of our actions in video format. As we mentioned earlier in the tutorial, we can save our work as a project or export our 2D images or 3D models. So far, we have tried to cover the most basic topics of Microsoft Paint 3D step by step and we have come to the end of this comprehensive Microsoft Paint 3D tutorial. If you haven't seen it, we recommend you to watch the previous and subsequent trainings of the series. We will continue the series with more beautiful trainings and we will be with you again very soon. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications for new videos. See you again soon, and thanks for watching.